What's going on people, it's your boy John the Juma, back for another YouTube tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover all you need to know to get started in Apeon Live if you're switching from another door. I remember when I switched to Apeon from Logic maybe three years ago, and my first session with Apeon was just like, right, how the hell do I do everything I've been doing in Logic Pro in Apeon now and I started setting myself a little task. Okay, how do I sample? How do I bring my drums in? How do I do this and that? Where are my plugins? All those sort of things is what we're gonna try and cover in this little video today. So let's get into the video. When I got into Apeon the first time, I was like, what the hell is this ugly piece of software? Why is it so gray? Um, guys, we know it looks terrible, but it doesn't matter. Once you work out what you can do with this thing, it's amazing. The first thing I wanna show you guys is is your session mode, right? We're not going to break this down in full entirety, but this is where you can mix your stuff. You get your faders here for each channel. And if you press the tab key, you go into the arrangement mode. Now this will be the mode you're most likely familiar with if you come from another door because you work in a linear fashion. You work from left to right, intro, chorus, build up, whatever you do, verse, um, you start from left and you finish at right. And that'll be a duration of your track. And Apeon, we've got quite a few options to work in different ways. Um, so the next videos or the next couple of videos would be on the session mode, but let's focus mainly on the arrangement mode. If you want to access the piano roll straight away, what you want to do is highlight a clip. Let's say let's do four bars because you know, four bars are cool. Right click and go insert MIDI clip. And as soon as you do that, you'll see some notes come down the side and you're now in your piano roll section. You can double click on here and bring some notes in. So if you don't want to double click each time, you can press the B key and go into the pencil mode and you can start to draw in notes. Um, you can change your grid size down here by pressing right click or anywhere actually, just move it. Let's say we move to a eighth notes. We can start drawing in notes. So if you're a wizard with your mouse, you can go in here and uh, click to your heart's content. So the next tip I would wanna know is how do I record MIDI? So whether that's using my MIDI keyboard, my MIDI controller, all types of MIDI, how do I record that? So the first thing you need to do is go over to your channel and make sure it's record armed, right? Once it's record armed, you'll be able to record some MIDI. So I'm gonna press stop over here, press record, and I'm just gonna play some MIDI notes. So I don't have any sound loaded in yet, we'll get to that next. But if you double click on this clip that you've just recorded, you see you've got your back in the piano roll and you can move some notes around and do what you want, uh, make some tweaks. You can obviously quantize. Uh, we'll break that down in another video, but quantizing if you want to get in time. So over here, right click, and you can quantize and set your settings up. Another quick tip is you can actually highlight some of your notes and use the arrow keys to move them around if you want to do some of that stuff. It's kind of cool. So the next thing I would want to know is where the hell are my plugins? Where can I find them? I've paid for some plugins. I want to use them in Apeon. How do I find them? So the quickest way to find them is let's actually get out of the piano roll. So if we press this little button, two buttons over here, we can swap back to these different modes. Or if you want to bring up the side panel here, you can click this arrow and now you can look back over here. So if you scroll down to this folder here, you can choose plugins and that's where your plugins will come up. So you can have VST if you're on Windows, but if you're on Mac, you can use audio units. I use VST even though I'm a Mac user, mainly because you never know with me, I might buy a PC one day and just want to be able to open all my Apeon um, files and plugins. So I use VST just as a safety net so I can move um, to PC if I have to. Something else that you're going to have to focus on is being able to navigate between the clip view and the device view. So when you click on the clip view, you'll be able to see whatever clip is being highlighted, whether that's a MIDI clip or an audio clip. Go to the bottom right hand corner, you can see we've got that selected. If we click on the device view now, we'll see all the devices that are on that channel. So this allows you to switch between them pretty easily. The shortcut for that is by pressing shift and tab. If you can't see your plugins in this window down here, what you need to do is go to preferences, open the plugins preferences, and you need to rescan your plugins. So once you've rescanned, it's going to scan your computer and look for some plugins and it'll bring them up. If it's still not working, you need to make sure you turn on VS VST2 audio units. And if you're using VST3 plugins, make sure they're turned on. I'm not sure if these are turned on by default, but I have them on just because some of my plugins are like, we support audio unit, but we don't support VST back and forth. So I just keep them all on just in case everything works. All right. 
Another really cool thing about Ableton, if you want a plugin, you can just search for it. So let's say I want to use expand now. So search expand. Boom, voila, there it is. We've got expand. Uh, if I want to use Omnisphere, there you go. And you can just, whatever track you're selected on, if you double click, it will replace um, whatever's there and bring it up. Boom, BST. Omnisphere loaded, ready to go. So the next thing I'd want to know is, all right, cool, I've got my plugins. How do I get my drum samples in here? Now, this is one of the easier ones. If you scroll down here, right, and go to add folder, what Apen will do now is it will go through your computer and um, allow you to find your drums. So I've got a folder here called drum kits. Now, all my drum kits, how I have them organized is I have them by year. So I did that in my last free beats video and I have them by year. So if I go to 2020, you can see the kits that I have in here. If I go to 2015, you can see some of the kits in here, 2016. The reason why I have it set like this is because anytime I can go through and find samples from the kind of wave I'm trying to recreate or make and then tap into those sort of samples. So you can just add the folder where your samples are. If you press open, what will happen is it will add to your side window here and you can scroll through all the packs that you've collected through that year, 2019, a few others here, 2018. What's really good about having all your stuff organized in years or just wherever your samples are, you can search for the sound that you're looking for. So if I go to my drum kits and search snare, it kind of narrows down the search a bit. So it only show you the kits that have the snare in it. So if I choose uh, this Murder Beats one here, it's going to bring snares and it's going to bring up all the snares that are in that pack. Um, just speeds your things up. Workflow is amazing. You know, you can just keep going through. Let's try it again. Let's try 808. I just want to bring up the 808. Let's go in one of these decap packs. So the next thing I'd want to know is how the hell do I export something in Ableton. So what I would do is, once you've got your, your track laid out, what you can do is just go to file at the top, go to export audio slash video, and you go to master, you can choose PCM WAV. So, you know, I, I like to use WAV instead of AIF. You know, I'm started on Windows, so like, I just always use WAV. Um, bit depth, I use 24, cause it's, you know, it's the standard in um, audio production saying that most CDs or most audio files you find in 16 bit. But when I render out my track outs, when I render out my beats, I always just use 24 bit because it just makes sense to me. Um, encode MP3. One thing I love about Apeon is they don't allow you to encode MP3s at any lower than 320. Like 320 should be the minimum. Like I always stick to 320 um, when I use other software. So it's good that they just lock you in at 320. Another thing you can do with your exporting, you can export all individual tracks, selected tracks or the return tracks or whatever you like. Once you've done that, you choose export and it will say, where would you like to save this on the desktop or wherever you want to put it? And you just press save and that will render and you can play it back. You can also use the locators. So when you highlight the selected areas that you want to have when you actually go to export, you'll see that the render start and the render length is exact to what you've highlighted. And sometimes it gives you a nice peace of mind when it comes to exporting. So, you know, it's exactly right. It's nothing worse than sending out some stems or sending out some track outs to get an email or phone call back to say they're incorrect. So sometimes I do this just to make sure my mind's put at ease and that I know I've done it correctly. The next thing I'd want to know if I was switching to Ableton is where is all the inbuilt um, audio effects. So if you actually scroll down these little categories, you'll find audio effects. Now, some of the ones you'd be more familiar with if you're looking for an equalizer, you know, just the basics, um, I recommend checking out the EQ8. Click and drag that into down here, drag and drop effects. And um, you can use your EQ. You can boost some of the lows, some of the mids, some of the highs. If you know how EQ works, this should be nothing different to you. Uh, another thing you could do is press this little arrow button up and you can actually move the EQ into a bigger state. And that's really gonna help if you're trying to get more information and get those real fine um, fine cut cue points and all that sort of stuff. If you're looking for a compressor, you can drag and drop a compressor on and use it, threshold, um, output. Um, you've got your ratio, you've got your attack, you've got your release. All this standard stuff you'll find on the compressor. You can also always click on these little arrows because you'll find additional things. So if you like to side chain your kicking it away, you can do that and choose your tracks along here. Um, you can use it all. Listen to the sound of your sign chain. Um, probably break that down in another video, but that's where you'd find that sort of stuff. 
If you're looking for your reverbs, you can actually drag and drop. Quick tip, if you actually click on the arrows and all of these audio effects, you'll actually find some of the presets within them. So I like using this warm reverb long and um, boom, that's now on my track or I'll put it on my return tracks and check, play with the dry, play with the wet and the pre-delay. So yeah, guys, that's a couple of tips that I hope can get you started with Vapor and, and get you up and running as quick as possible. Um, the worst thing about moving to a new digital audio workstation is having to work everything out again. And that's a major pain point for most producers or music creatives is that on my days, I have to learn something from scratch, brand new again, when I've been spending five years using Logic or I've been using FL since I was a you. You know, it's like sometimes you're going to have to just get over those hurdles for the better. The amount of producers that have come to me and said, John, why didn't you put me onto Ableton sooner? It's like, fam, I tried to tell you two years ago, but you was being a bit too stubborn because you didn't want to lose, leave FL. And my goal out here is not to convert people. You know, I respect everybody from all your different doors and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you need to make the best music, they're all just tools. Like I've said before, I'm not loyal to any of these programs. If something better comes out, I'm switching. There's no doubt about it. I want to make the best music. So start trying to adopt that mindset. If you want to make the best music of your life, don't be pigeonholed by a tool. See what your friends are talking about, because what you might find is like, like the old tutorials where guys are sampling using scissors and stuff and spending hours doing that stuff. And I'm doing it quicker in sampler or in simpler because I'm just slicing stuff quick. You know what I'm saying? Don't let your mindset hold you back. Stay up to date stay relevant and stay aware of what's happening in the community. You know, there's so many new tools that are coming out that's giving us really sick sounds, really creative stuff. You know, when you listen to sound palettes from today, from 10 years ago, it blows my mind because it's completely different. You know, sometimes I listen to beats nowadays. And I'm like, what instrument is that? I don't even know what that is. And I love that because now I spend time trying to get close to it or try and just, I just want to know what it is. So I'll spend time doing my own experiments. Whereas you listen to a, a trap beat from 2009, yeah, it's a piano with some delay on it or it's a brass sample or whatever. Where nowadays, stuff is getting so obscure. You don't know if it's a sample. You don't know if it's some weird sort of modulation. There's some crazy filtering going on. It's a lot more complicated now. And if you're just stuck in the old mindset, you're not going to keep up with the new sound. So yeah, a few little gems there, a few little words of advice. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's been John the Dreamer. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like me to make for my next video. If there's anything that I missed and you need some more support with, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to help you out. So it's been John the Dreamer. Until next time.